team, welcome back to the Man That Can Project podcast. I've had an amazing amount of feedback from the last uh, podcast talking about the power in asking for help with Grayson. It was unreal and it's definitely going to probably be one of the biggest episodes so far. So super pumped for that. Glad you guys have been sharing it on social media and glad you're getting an immense amount of value. So today we are talking about the relationship with alcohol and how for some of us blokes, it affects our relationships. So I'm going to share a bit of experience, share a bit of, I get a little bit heated because I think it's uh, it's frustrating to see so many good men struggling and losing great things in their lives. And I'm not even just talking about relationships, but the relationships are generally the trigger for a lot of men to make change. Uh, there's a lot of other things that this can relate to. So listen in, buckle up. Once again, please, please, please share these episodes, guys. The more you share it, the more we get the word out there, the more men we can impact. Okay, and ladies, if you're listening, share it with your partners, brothers, husbands, dads, anyone who needs to hear it who will get value. And on a side note, just before we dive in, I have two more spots opening up. So if you're listening to this one, if you're listening to this, it's the 16th of September, 2019. You can head over to my website, The Man That Can Project. You can head over to the Instagram, slide into my DMs to find out more. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Enjoy the episode. I want to talk about people's relationships, okay, with alcohol. So over the past week, I've had four sort of solid conversations with men and a lot, you know, I guess the biggest problem that they wanted to change was their relationship with alcohol and how it's affecting their relationship with their partner. Reese, it's having a brother. Okay, and unfortunately this is something that comes up much too often and from the poll that I did yesterday there was a lot of blokes who also, and actually there's some females, whose relationship with drug and alcohol is affecting those other relationships. Now, when it comes down to it, when I ask these gentlemen why they felt the need to turn to alcohol or why they felt the need to continually turn to drugs, Queens, New York... Hello, Melbourne, Newcastle, New York, Gussie. Okay, they felt the need to turn to drugs and alcohol because, you know, that's what their environment did and that's what their their mates did and that's just what they thought was fun. And I can 100% relate to that. Like, there was a point in my life where, uh, you know, Thursday or sometimes even Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday would be drinking and getting on the gear. Right, it was fun, and I even when I think about it now, I had a lot of incredible time. So I can understand why, when life's not going so well for you, you want to have a bit of fun, you want to feel good, so you would go back to that default pattern, that default setting. But here's the thing, guys. When you wake up on a Sunday morning or a Saturday morning or whatever morning it is, and you sit there going, what the fuck have I just done again? And you start thinking to yourself, I've let myself down again, I didn't want to do this, I know I'm better than this. Right, we, we have those feelings where it's like, I've got to change, I want to change. Come Wednesday next week, you're already getting excited for the beers again. Why? Because we're not putting enough thought or intention behind having enjoyment in our life outside of the drugs and the alcohol and the significant positive emotional experiences that we have with that. So if you break it down, guys, if whenever you think about fun and it comes back to alcohol, drinking and drugs... There's a growth opportunity here. There's a moment where, as a man, you've got to look yourself and say, right, well, the reason why I'm even considering this, and for the, the lads that I spoke with this week, the reason why you're even on the phone with me is because there's something at risk and something that you really care about, which is your partner. Right? And in order to change that, you can't have the fucking best of both worlds. But I hear these, hear these, these guys like, Yeah, but it's just what I do. It's fun and I want to be able to go out and have beers and get hammered with the boys. Like, I love that. But I don't want my partner to leave me. And as I just said, you can't have the fucking best of both worlds. Right? You've got to work out what's most important to you and then you've got to start creating events, going through that growth experience, events in your life that don't require you to do the excessive drinking and the excessive drug use. Because the moment that you can start creating and experiencing some emotional events or some, not even emotional events, some fucking events in your life, Toddy, Bev, what's happening, gents, those events in your life that are fun, you have a good time and they don't 
involve alcohol, they don't involve drugs, you're going to start realizing that, hey, my def- well, you're going to re- start rewiring that default thing that every time life sucks and you're going through a rut, whether it be, be with work or whatever, that your default setting goes from, fuck, right, I'm going to get hammered because that's an escape and that's, you know, I always have a few good laughs with the boys to going, fuck, you know what, to get away this time, I'm going to go for a weekend camping or I'm going to go for a surf with the boys or I'm going to do X, Y, Z that doesn't always necessarily end up with you being fucking hungover and miserable on a Sunday morning. Right? So, I don't even really need to elaborate. I'll just end up rambling. If you are at the point where alcohol and drugs are affecting your relationships and you've just tuned in, go back to the very start once this is done live. But the truth is, and from my own experience, is you can't have the best of both worlds. But I still remember, I still remember, and this goes back, fuck, from the ages of probably 16 to fucking 24, 23, where I would cheat on my old missus. And I remember on a, one particular time where I was sitting in the gutter out the front of a house with a mate and I was like, fucking did it again and I felt like shit like I felt guilty I just felt horrible that I that I did that but then my mate turns turns around and goes yeah I did the same thing let's just keep it quiet and from that moment I was like fuck well maybe even though I feel like I should be doing more I feel like I should be doing better that's just what all the that's what we do everyone in my life and everyone in my environment was doing the same shit all the boys were doing the same shit I wanted to be one of the boys so I fit in quite fucking well but in the reality, it was fucking destroying me at the same time, which obviously led me to want to get into that cycle even more because you wake up, have done actions and taken actions that you're resentful of and don't respect. So the only way to escape that is to try and numb those feelings or bury those feelings, which leads you to then not talk about what the fuck's really going on. You become an angry person, right? See... The message that I want to get across is that you can't have the best of both worlds. You can't, you know, continue being one of the boys and carrying on that way and then expect your partner to be all right with it if you're carrying on like a fucking idiot. We've got a message. With it. My, hold on, what have we got? My husband tells me his personality was formed with drinking and he doesn't know. Yeah, right. And there's a lot of people who feel that their personality is formed with alcohol and that's exactly it. It is because it depends where you grew up, obviously, but I grew up in a culture where it was in the, the local town, it was beer, footy, and like everything came back to drinking at the pub and you know, all the experiences that you had there, getting hammered drunk and drinking games and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not saying it's bad. Like I fucking had a heap of fun. But if you're feeling like shit's going wrong in your life, then that may be one of the first places you want to address. If life's going fucking swell for you and your relationship's thriving and you know, you've got no issues, carry on. Don't listen to this video. That's not, it's not intended for you. It's intended for those people who keep waking up and they're having that conversation with their missus where they're about to fucking leave them because I had four of them this week. Maybe five, no, five. This week. So, yeah, from that experience, like what had to shift for me, I had to shift my environment because I wasn't a strong enough person. I wasn't confident enough in myself to be able to go, I'm just going to go hang out with the boys and have one or two beers. That's not how I operated. If I went with the boys and had one or two beers, you'd eventually start feeling that, you know, have that inner smile where you're like, this is fun. I'm ready to get amongst it here. And you'd do the same thing again. I had to be strong enough to realize and accept Sorry to hear. And I had to be strong enough to accept that I was weak in my decisions. I wasn't strong enough to be able to hold my own and, you know, respect myself in, in that manner. So I had to remove myself or I did what what I felt was the best thing at the time, which was remove myself from the situation. The moment that I re- removed myself from the situation, I wasn't tempted anymore until I built, you know, put the work into be comfortable in myself, understand what I wanted to achieve from things and now I can go to environments where there's drinking and you know drugs and all that sort of stuff and not, not be or partake. Right? I still drink though, of course. I haven't touched drug for six years. 
It's a fucking bonus. Right, so you can't have the best of both worlds, guys. And that's what I'm getting across is like, if alcohol and drugs are affecting you, you need to first and foremost address your situation. Obviously, understand that the reason why you keep turning to addiction, essentially, is the way as I look at it, is like, if you've had so many incredible events where you have been drinking and or drugs have been involved, of course you're going to be like, oh, fuck, I want that feeling. That's my default go-to. But also flip the perspective. It's like you can still get those same feelings. You can still have just as much fucking fun without the drinking and without the alcohol, right? If Once again, if you're having troubles with it, it's just there's growth to be done. It's not saying you're going to nail it first time. You've got to fucking grow. You've got to learn. You know, for me, I loved alcohol because it was a social lubricant I could talk to people better I could share a little bit more I could laugh a little bit more I could do stupid things and not worry about judgment after you know five years of work I've realized that I can do all that same shit without alcohol you should see me when I'm on alcohol now it's fucking wow next level but the thing is there's work to be done and if you're using alcohol to cover that or to get rid of certain aspects of your life or because you're fucking bored address the situation address what's really going on don't have to you know keep going through that pattern to the point where your relationships are broken. thank you for listening to the man that can project podcast my name is Lockie Stewart and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful if you did please take a moment to rate and review the man that can project on your favorite podcast platform And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.